Welcome to the 200th episode of Wildcat Country presented by Harris Auction Casino. Eric Cohen and Shane Dale on what is an awesome week for college basketball. It is March Madness. It is our 200th show. And Shane, we are giving away prizes. We're going to talk about this multiple times throughout the show, but let's not waste any time. How can people win? All right. Well, first of all, 200 episodes. Uh, can, uh, thanks, Eric, for uh, for wanting to bring this back. You know, Jeff Dean and I did this back in 2017. Uh, just time constraints. We weren't able to do it anymore. And we restarted this in the middle of, an, of a pandemic. And it was your idea to to, to get it going again. Uh, appreciate it. It's been a blast. Um, it, we lo- love talking yeah. about the uh, the victories. And uh, then we have and we have a sounding box to complain when uh, with awful losses, uh, which hopefully we won't do uh, in episode 201. But we'll see. Um, but to celebrate our 200th, our 200th episode, we do have three awesome giveaways, okay. um, and it's free to enter and real simple. So our sponsor, our primary sponsor here, Harris Auction Casino, they're offering a, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, Eric, but they're offering a one night, any day stay up to $200 plus a $200 certificate at chop block and brew for dinner or lunch or dinner and a $30 certificate to agaves, which most people go to for breakfast, right? Yeah, I mean uh, that that is a monster package, yeah. over four hundred dollars, and you know you'll I'm yep. sure you'll be out there, and you can you can go uh, to the casino. They have a sports book there. They have a great pool there. Two hundred dollars for dinner. I mean, yeah, have fun. That is yeah. that's yeah. dinner. Well, we right know, there. And we all know dinner ain't cheap these days. Nothing's no. cheap these days. So that that's very generous. And and you know, Harris is a a brand new sponsor still for us. So we appreciate that very much. Then our other awesome sponsor that y'all know. Pre- pretty well if you've been listening for a while ice shaker they're offering a pair of fantastic arizona themed ice shaker bottles uh, i posted them on the uh, wildcat country twitter page i'll post them again soon um, but check them out there they're fantastic so here's all you have to do the criteria is i'm just going to pull it up here make sure i get it right so first you got to subscribe to our youtube channel okay so make sure that you are already or that you 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 do that you if you haven't done it already make sure you do it um second Leave a comment um, with this uh, under along with this episode on our YouTube page. So leave a comment below the video. All you have to do is describe your single favorite Arizona NCAA tournament moment. That's it. And and, and it could be men, men's or women's. I have a guess as to what most of you know the most popular sure. answer will 97, be. Ninety seven, yeah. Of but course. maybe some fans have a different one, or they're a little bit you know some younger fans in particular. Um, if you want to be a little more creative and not go for the obvious, then we like that. But it doesn't matter. It just just you have to you have to submit something along those lines. Deadline is end of day Sunday, March twenty first. So like eleven fifty nine p.m. Arizona time, Sunday, March twenty fourth. Twenty uh, fourth, I said not twenty first. Twenty fourth. Okay. So next week, we're gonna do a random drawing. We're we're gonna pick our three winners. It'll be online through random.org and I'm going to record it. So everyone knows it's on the up and up. I'm going to record it before the show. So that'll take some of the guesswork out of it. And I'll have a chance to make sure that everyone who's, who's won uh, is actually subscribed to our, to our YouTube channel, uh, but I'm going to record it and I'm going to post it. So everyone knows it's on the up and up and we will announce the winners on next week's episode. All right. So, so three winners. So, so yep. it, it'll either win the package to Harris auction, or you'll get, one of two ice shakers. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, and, and yeah, and specifically, so we're gonna do it like if you go to random.org, you know, you randomize the drawing. And so the, the number one person on the, the person at the very top of the list is gonna win the the package from Harris Auction. Numbers two and three are gonna win the ice shakers. That's how it's gonna work. Great. Uh yep. we will mail that we'll get your address. We'll mail those to you. You'll get a certificate from Harris Auction and you'll get the ice shakers straight from Ice Shaker. Pretty darn exciting. Yep. A great way to celebrate number two hundred. An episode that, you know, you and I have not spoken. Uh, we were recording this on Monday night. We haven't spoken since the bracket was released. I The only thing I've seen are your tweets. So I do not know what you're thinking. I know that a lot of people are expecting cynical Shane. Uh, hey, I tried to unleash some positivity last week after they beat Oregon. And everyone's like, no, they're terrible. They're regressing, blah, blah. It's like, well, that's what I get for now. Uh, you know, I, I'll tell you what. what. After that game, I thought you had a, a, an excellent Twitter thread. Thank For you. those people that think Shane is all negative, go read that thread. I even reposted it. Yeah. Because I said, this is a great thread. And I'm not just trying to, you know, bump you up because you're my co-host for 200 of these things. Uh, plus, we did a few together on the original Wildcat Country. But nonetheless, like, I, I because I thought it was a good, I thought you made coherent points. You're not saying, okay, this is a, a terrible loss. The season's over. You're saying, all right, we got, we have some chances here. Yeah. So, okay, fine. I respect it. Appreciate that. 
Appreciate that. All yeah. Right, no, all right. So we'll, we'll get so, into it. Yeah, we'll get into it. Let's get into it. Yeah. All right. So let's get into it. All right. So, so first of all, uh, number one, Shane, let's get into your standouts and or grievances. I know there's a lot to talk about yeah. basketball only, but if you want to throw something else in there, by all means. Well, I kind of are. Well, I kind of did the grievances already, but uh, I'll, I'll do. This is the non-basketball portion of the, of the show. I'll okay. do it real quick because I want to shout out the our indoor track and field athletes who are part of six first place finishes at the first outdoor event of the season last week. Uh, and I'm going to butcher the names. Uh, Tapanisa uh, Havea in women's shot put. Cooper Quigley in men's 1500 meters, Antonia Sanchez Nunez in women's 400 meter hurdles, Jan Vasquez in men's 400 meter hurdles, and the four athletes who won the men's four by 100 meter relay and the men's four by 400 meter relay. I'm trying to get all sports in here before the end of the season, and those are some good ones. So I wanted to mention, uh, shout out our track and field team. And then it's this, this is away from from this is not a sport one per se. This is away from the field. I want to mention Leif Magnuson, who's an offensive lineman on the football team. He partnered with the Boys and Girls Club of Tucson to play some games with the kids, help serve some snacks and dinner with them. And he's sharing proceeds from the sales of his jersey swag and uh, with the Boys and Girls Club. And he's giving away game tickets to the organization as well. So it's not a marketing thing for him. He's just doing it because he's a good dude who's investing in the community he plays football in. He's giving back some of that NIL money. And I wanted to mention that on the show because I think he deserves it. So congrats uh, or not congrats, but 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 thank you, Lee, for, for representing Arizona so well. Last act, Leaf, uh, and thank you for doing that if you uh, are listening to the program, which, who knows. Uh, all is. right, so it's time for a spirited edition, for sure, uh, of Buy or Sell, presented by our friends at Ice Shaker. Go to IceShaker.com, use promo code Wildcat Country, capital W, capital C, and get $5 off uh, your Ice Shaker. Or, and once you do buy your Ice Shaker, in case you don't win one next week, make sure to fill out the post-purchase survey mentioned yes. Wildcat Country. We'll be very grateful for you. All right, Shane, everybody is very excited for what you're going to say about this one. Because oh, everybody sure. knows what I'm going to say. Like, mm -hmm. you have an idea of how I'm going to react to the draw. But okay, Shane, I'll start with you. Number one, Arizona men's basketball got the best draw imaginable on paper, not having to face a top 10 team in the net rankings until at least the Elite Eight. Buy or sell? Uh... I guess I'll mostly buy like it, it's definitely better than being rewarded for being the second best team in the country by being sent to Texas to play an underseated Houston team with a sweet 16, much better than that. But yeah, it's yeah. not bad. And more or less, I think what we expected in terms of the top four seeds in the West region, just about all the projections, even though the, the, the turn, selection committee did a lot of crazy stuff, but it, I think this one was pretty predictable, at least the top four seeds in the West. And I know we'll get into it more in the final segment, but I'll just say for now that silly as it sounds, uh, Long Beach State is not Princeton, which was one of the better 15 seeds in the history of the tournament. OK, uh, they got to the Sweet 16. Let's not forget. But yeah, between the draw they got and the fact that this is the healthiest Tommy Lloyd team we've seen at Arizona, which matters this time of year, there are certainly fewer excuses to make a deep run. I mean, there are still very good teams in, the, in, in this region who are capable of beating Arizona. But considering everything, including the experience on this year's team. This is probably Arizona's best shot to make a deep run just in the three years that Tommy Lloyd's been in Tucson. That's what everybody wanted to hear from you. Listen, I think Arizona got the best draw you could have asked for. I mean, I am a Bay I don't think much of Baylor. Yeah, I, I'm a little concerned about that second round matchup. I think Nevada's pretty good. They're Nevada, sneaky good. A lot of people think Nevada was the most good. underseeded team. Yeah. In the in the yeah. tournament, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know about that, but you know, Jared Lucas uh used to play at Oregon State and they got to the Elite Eight with Jared Lucas, uh, who's their point guard now at Nevada. I mean, that's that's a dangerous team uh, that I kind of hope Dayton wins. I mean, I hope I'm yeah. I hope I'm not a jinx here. Dayton's more of a defensive team, but I think Arizona could just simply outscore them. And Dayton one time this year lost like 49-47. Uh, this is a team that can just go very cold offensively. Uh, they have a very good player. Uh, I think his name is Holmes. Could be wrong there. Deron Holmes, something like that. A good player, but I, Nevada to me. And I hope these aren't the curse words. If if so, then you know, uh, come back and trash me next week by all means. Uh, but I think I think it's it's a tricky game. I mean, I'm a little nervous about it, but I love the draw. I, I, Baylor doesn't scare me, and I think the top half where North Carolina got. I mean, we saw Alabama. They're they're tricky. They're the four seed. Yeah. Uh, you got St. Mary's and GCU, two dangerous teams on that side. So really, I think North Carolina got a worse draw than Arizona did. I'm I'm plenty fine with what I saw there. 
Yeah, there and I've seen a number of metrics, and I, I don't remember all of them, but like there, there's like a like series of metrics that show like 22 of the last 24 champions or 23 of the last 24 champions meet this criteria. And a lot of it has to do with where they're at in Ken Palm. And in all of them, Arizona is one of like the six or seven teams that fits that criteria uh this season. And North Carolina is not one. Like Arizona is the only one in the rest in the West region. So does that mean they're gonna skate all the way to the final four? Absolutely not. Um, you know, just think back to last year's tournament, a lot of crazy stuff can happen, but uh, I going back to your point, I, I think that the three best teams so far, this in terms of resumes, have been Purdue, UConn, and Houston, and whatever order you want to put yeah. them. And yeah. Arizona got in a region with without any of those teams, so that yeah. in itself is a win. Yeah, and I also I think Arizona is in their side on their side of the bracket. Clemson is one of the weakest six seeds. They did not finish the season that well. New Mexico got hot and won the the Mountain West tourney, but they don't play defense. Uh, this is a team that. Fits right in Arizona's wheelhouse if, if they were to play them in the Sweet 16 in that Arizona just outscores them. I mean, first one to 100 wins, and that's exactly what the Wildcats want to do. New Mexico can score, and, and that game could be – I mean, listen, every game is dicey at this point. Yeah. Even Long Beach State, who was going to fire their coach last week, uh, Dan Monson, you know – hired Tommy Lloyd at Gonzaga way back in the day. Right. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, so nice little storyline there. They, they're going to fire him. He, he goes out and wins the uh, – you know, the, the tournament there in the big one. And now, you know, I think of all the two seeds to play, I'm not scared of Long Beach State. If Arizona loses to Long Beach State, uh, we have a nuclear show next week. I well, mean, we're, not, yeah. we're, we're calling for heads. Yes. Well, heads and, and hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's, you know, it's a great, you know, feel good movie where Long Beach State is done. Their coach is on the way out. Let's win it for sure. coach. But the movie ends at the end of that conference championship. It ends. Yeah, I, that's where, that's where, where it cuts. And the, the text cr- on the screen says Long Beach State would go on to lose in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Hopefully. If Arizona, if Arizona were to lose that game, Shane, uh, you blow up the whole program. Well, I'm just telling you that. We'll cross you that blow it up. We come to it. I will cross right. So I'm not. I'm not worried about it. Second round game, a little timid about. It. Uh, yeah. All right, number two. Admit it, Shane. Your expectations are lower this year than the previous two because of Arizona's recent tournament record and losses this season to multiple inferior teams. Now, I wrote that question, and then I heard your answer in the last segment. So where do you stand? Are you more down on this team because they lost to worse competition, or are you higher on them? No, I mean, from a personal fan's perspective, yes, I'm I'm very cautious about it. You know, like I did a little Twitter poll. It's like, how do you like Arizona's draw? And one of the one of the options was just beat Long Beach State and like over a third of the voters said that that one. So like, but it, I, I am wary of it, but mainly just from a fan's perspective, because of the heartbreak you've experienced in the tournament over and over for over two decades now, and especially the last couple of years. And, you know, consider you consider your, your scene. I feel like the CD matters. It seems to matter less now than it did even a few years ago. You know, you're seeing more and more first round upsets. You're seeing a 16 over a one every so often. You're seeing teams seated four or lower advanced to the final four pretty regularly. And even the championship game, the seating was never the most important thing. But for whatever reason, I think it, it carries even weight, less weight now than it did a, a decade ago. As far as the teams Arizona was lost to, said it before, I'll say it again. I think this team gets bored. I think they're anxious to get to the big dance and and for guys like Caleb Love and Keisha Johnson, they've been chomping at the bed all season to finish what what they started elsewhere. And I think there's just there's not much importance played placed on conference tournaments outside of teams that know they have to win it to get into the NCA tournament. And you know, we saw that this past week with so many top seeds losing in the quarters of the semis. Uh great stat from our friend Blair Willis. Since 2000, only 11 of the 23 national champions won their conference tournament. And of the yeah, final, four, it's a, it's a, of the final four yeah. teams, of the final four teams, only forty-one of ninety-two won their conference tournament. That's only forty-five percent. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's why I, we're we're gonna we're not gonna dwell on what happened. You know, listen, uh, there are, there are things going on out there that Boswell was seen at a at a blackjack table or something. Like that. I'm not gonna get into that. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kylan's got to get his head on straight, and if he doesn't yeah. get his head on straight for this tournament, then he probably shouldn't be a part of the program long term. I'm not concerned about that. I would so I rather not get see, into that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I expect to see, I just wanted to address it. Cause you know, people are yeah. going to say, why didn't you? It's, a, right, yeah, there you it's, go. On, it's out there. I thought, I thought, you know, they played well against USC on Thursday and just laid an egg in the second half against Oregon. Yeah. Oregon was a team on a mission. Uh, they were a team that looked like a, a tournament team. They knew the they year. had to get in. They had to win That's that right. tournament to get in. Yep. They, they were six and zero in the pack 12 uh, this season. Then they went on a losing streak, lost. Basically they lost uh, eight of their last 14 games in conference, then got hot. Uh, so good for them. Uh, Dante was a beast. 
He what did he go perfect? I think in the in the championship game against Colorado. And good for him. With that said, not going to freak out about that game. My expectations are a little dim just because I'm not sure I trust Tommy Lloyd as a head coach in the tournament yet. I feel like I've been burned two years in a row. Yeah. It's a, where it, Arizona it, that's lost. fair because he hasn't yeah, earned I'm, it yet. Yeah. Now, I if the draw wasn't so good, I, I mean, I was looking for ways to fade Arizona. I, I'd be flat out honest with you. I, I just I looked at the draw and I and I've sat there and done multiple brackets and I'm like, I if they lose early, I am going to be so pissed. I, it's just true. Yeah, I, that's fair. This and everywhere I have read, just people I've talked to, things I've read. You, this worked out perfectly for Arizona. You got the two seed in the West. You got a great drop. If you screw this up with the final four in Glendale, that's not, then yeah. we, then how can you trust Tommy Lloyd? Like this I, is, I, yeah, I get the most scared as a fan, Eric, when the stars are aligned perfectly, you got a great draw. It's in Glen final fours in Glendale. Everything's perfect. What could possibly go wrong, man? It, uh, it's, uh, it's, I, I get it. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, Number three, Shane, anything less than an Elite Eight appearance is unacceptable with this draw. I don't know. I mean, it depends on who the loss would be to. You know, they lose to Baylor, which is one of the most battle-tested teams in the country, you know, because the majority of their games have been against quad one opponents, and they won 10 of them. It's probably going to be hard for me to get upset about that, even though it would obviously be disappointing. If they lose sooner than that or lose to an inferior opponent in the Sweet 16, then yes, I might I might have that attitude. Again, Nevada was probably severely underseated. Probably they're probably worthy of more of a more worthy of a 60 than Clemson is. You could probably just switch those two around, honestly. Um, but yeah, I, I think that it's it, this team is more built for March than Tommy Lloyd's previous two. And their health permitting, there is no excuse to at least get to the Sweet 16 and put up a very good performance in that game at the very minimum. Yeah, I feel very confident that you and I are going to do a show next week previewing Arizona Sweet 16 and potentially Elite Eight matchups. If it's not there, as I said, uh, I'm going to be fired up, and you're going to be have to be the one calming me down in, for mm. episode 201 of Wildcat Country because, uh, Tommy, uh, you're a very good coach, and I appreciate what you've done for the program. You better make this one count. Uh, the, the Stars... Have aligned, no injuries, you know, assuming nobody gets hurt, uh, uh, not really an excuse. Uh, if if they were to lose earlier, Shane, does the pressure ratchet up on Tommy Lloyd going forward? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it all it all comes down to the tournament. If fair or not, you know, there's so many other variables to consider, and Arizona's checked all the other boxes under Tommy Lloyd. But number one, the goal is to win the NCAA tournament and get to the Final Four. And number two... To build off of that, Arizona hasn't been over 20 years. And you combine those things, you, you just can't keep having great regular season teams. It's yeah. not enough. It's not enough. And so I, I don't know if I blame Tommy Lloyd for, for what's happened the, the previous two years, especially last year. I mean, they, they that team was never that good. And Princeton was actually pretty good. They didn't have an alpha last year like we talked about. So I, I sort of get it, even though it was an embarrassing loss. You lose to a 15, it's always going to be embarrassing. This year, I feel like there are few, even fewer excuses than the first two years. And I think this year, this team needs to make a deal. Like if they, if they lose a great back and forth game to Baylor in the Sweet 16, for example. I, I wouldn't could, be happy, I, but. No, I could live with that. You know, it happens. Baylor's a mm. very good team. But if they if they go out before then, uh, I think it's it, it's time and it's probably be fair to start ramping up the criticism of, Tom, of Tommy Lloyd as yeah. just not a very good tournament coach. Yeah, great. Regular season. You keep us happy for four months and then choke when it counts. Yeah. Uh, let's hope we're not talking about that next week. Just, just going to say that. All right. So I had a, a, a back, back and forth with a, a fan of the show named Kevin. Uh, he had been uh, very spirited uh, thoughts on Adia Barnes and the program. Um, you know, it's been a, a you know, a, a tough year for the women's tumultuous. Team. Yeah. Tumultuous is a, is a good way to put it, but somehow a 15 loss team yeah. is in the first four uh for the for the women's draw i i can't even believe it shane so i guess number four here uh is very simple for all that the women's program has been through over the last year we need to give adia barnes a ton of credit for leading them to the big dance yeah it, it's kind of um a chicken of the egg situation so i guess she, she deserves credit for for patching this team together and getting them to the ncaa tournament or at least getting them in contention to go to the ncaa tournament regardless of what the committee decided but why did we get to this point? And, and we talked about, again, we'd, we'd love to have a Dia on to talk about it. Hopefully we will at some point, but you know, it, 
the reason why Arizona is in this situation is it, be, it sounds like, you know, maybe Adidas were up some people the wrong way, you know, and, and there's, there's a lot of rumors and conjecture. And I don't like going off of that, but it's there and you have to talk about it. And so, yes, it, it's fantastic that really this seven player team managed to, to sneak into mm-hmm. the tournament just yeah. in itself. You know, congratulations to the players for, for doing that, even though I, I think it was questionable to put them in. I'm thrilled about it as an Arizona fan, but what's the main reason that Arizona is in this predicament? I think we need answers to that. And so I will give Adia credit for taking what she had left and getting the most out of them. Cause I think she did, but we definitely have questions about this program going forward that need to be answered. Yeah. I mean, the fact is Adia is a, a great ex, uh, Adia is a great coach. Yeah. You know, you may not always agree with her offense, but she coaches her, coaches her teams hard on defense. Does a, does a very good job there. The PAC 12 is arguably the toughest league right there with the sec uh, in terms of just toughness. Yeah. Uh, top to bottom, I mean, you have Stanford, you have UCLA and and USC who are really, really good teams. I mean, Arizona took USC to the wire twice. They beat Stanford on the road, albeit they were without their best player, who's an yeah. All-American. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, uh, Arizona probably didn't belong. I don't think a 15-loss team uh, belongs as an at-large. I don't, I don't I don't care who it is. I would say the same about the men's team. Yeah. They lose 15 games next year in the Big 12. I don't care how good it is. Shouldn't lose 15 games. Shouldn't be two games above 500. Not good enough to me. Um, but okay, I congratulations to them. I wish them well. And we will make our picks uh, later on. I guess, you know, I don't know if we, we're going to talk women's uh, later in the show. Do you think they beat Auburn, Shane? Uh, I, I think they kind of, the idea has already squeezed every last drop out of this team. So it's hard to say. I, I would probably pick Auburn to win. I think just getting in is, is great, but you never know. I mean, Arizona's, like I said, battle tested in the Pac-12. So maybe they get, they win that first game. If, it, maximum one win, I would say. Yeah, I, I just can't see it Um, I, where Arizona finds a way to, to get there. I mean, if they were to win, they would play Syracuse. And then if they were to, to beat Syracuse, who's the sixth seed, they would play UConn. Well, we all remember what happened in the final four, but Ari McDonald's not walking through this door, no. especially up in stores, Connecticut. Um, hey, you know, good luck to him on Saturday. Or, I, I, you know, if, or they, I think they, what is it? Thursday night is when the first game is. I, like, I want to say what, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, okay. Then, yeah. Cause they have that play in game. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So I wish him the best of luck. Congrats to Adia for getting the team there. Looking forward to seeing what she does with the roster next year, but I don't think they belong. All right. Just going to, just going to throw that out there. All right. Uh, Before we bring on our guest, Casey Jacobson, let me tell you about Harris Auction. Harris Auction is the only Valley Casino with Caesars Rewards, the player's card that pays for Vegas and more. In fact, the reward credits you earn with Caesars Rewards can be redeemed for hotel stays, dining at more than 50 destinations across the country, including Las Vegas, like Tahoe, New Orleans, and dozens of others. Sign up, play, and earn Caesars Rewards only at Harris Auction Casino. One card, 50 destinations to enjoy your perks. Coming up next, Matt Muehlbach on the 200th episode of Wildcat Country. What's up, Wildcat Country? Chris Gronkowski here, and I'm at the Ice Shaker Warehouse, the proud sponsor of the Wildcat Country podcast. And I got something new and exciting to show you. We're talking about the 4D printed University of Arizona shaker bottles with the legacy championships on it. Check it out now at iceshaker.com. Shane, very glad for a 200th episode to welcome Mr. Triple Double himself, Matt Muehlbach, to uh, talk about everything Arizona in the NCAA tournament. You've heard him on the Pac-12 Network. He's all over the Pac-12 Network last week, as well as the Fox Sports family of networks, Fox Sports 1 specifically. So, Matt, great to have you on once again. Thank you. Are you, as far as, let's talk about Arizona's draw for a second. I think they got a dream uh, draw in the West. I mean, you could not have, if you had told me to put together a bracket, with realistic seeds, I could not have put together a better bracket for Arizona on paper. Do you agree or disagree? I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, you know, look, this time of year, no one, no one can foresee really what the deal is, and who there might be teams that we think are not as good, and they turn out to be like you look back and say, "Damn, that team was pretty damn good." Um, and so there's all kinds of teams. Like I think two years ago, Houston was was one of the worst seeding jobs ever by the committee that Arizona got them in the Sweet 16. They finished as a number two in the nation, Ken Palm. Like, they, they should have been a one or two at the worst. And to get a five seed in, you know, San Antonio, th- those are the things you just don't – I didn't know at the time. 
uh, you look back and, and you can kind of see it. Um, so I will say this, I think the one team, you know, the, if I had to bet on a team that scares me the most, it's probably Baylor. Um, just a big 12 team that's very seasoned, um, you know, battle tested and, and a great coach that that's been through all this. So, but, it, but, but I'm with you. Um, I'm with you. I think it's, I think it's a very, very good, good, good draw. All right, Matt. Thanks uh, for joining us on show number 200. We appreciate it. Uh, so let's talk about the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, Arizona flame, uh, I don't say flame, uh, flames out, but you know, they, they kind of did against Oregon, especially in that second half. I was, at, we talked a little bit about this before we started recording. I was actually kind of okay with it in terms of, you know, like the last two years, they won the conference tournament. They didn't do make any noise in the NCAA tournament. They're, they're going in healthy. They got a little time to stew about it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I've, I've always been a proponent of losing before the tournament. And um, I think it helps reset teams and get refocused. And I'll even go one step further. I think there's a lot of times on a basketball team, you lose a game and um, the next game, everyone's like, oh, they're going to kill them because they're mad. And, and sometimes it takes two losses. Um, it's a, it's a weird dynamic. Like you, you sort of like have this fake, I called it fake juice. Um, you know, when I was playing, like our team used to call it that, like you're all pumped up, like, Oh, we lost the last one, but sometimes it, it doesn't really digest as a team. And I wonder if that happened to, to this Arizona team, you know, they lose the USC game, but it, in a way it didn't feel like a loss. Cause I don't think they showed up. They were still kind of, they were on the Richard Jefferson hangover, um, you know, still st celebrating the, the the conference title. So I don't think they really thought, oh, we didn't, you know, we probably didn't give 100%. They came back, beat SC, and then they're like, okay, we're back. And then the loss, I think, kind of shocked them. You know, 59 points was surprising. 14 turnovers in that game with li limited possessions. They had 18 turnovers against USC. So I think it was, and of course, the guards didn't, play well or shoot well. So I think it was a way for them to, to sort of, it's a wake up call. And I think that'll help them. Do you think Matt, that the, some of the top teams in the country in general, don't take the conference tournaments as seriously as maybe they did back in the day. Cause I know back in 88, when you guys went to the final four, you were in rough shot over everyone in the PAC 10 tournament, won it easily and got to the final four. Uh, regardless of that, it didn't certainly, you talk about how, one, right. you know, needing a loss before the tournament uh, but that obviously didn't stop you guys from getting to the final four, but you look at so many great teams lost and got their butt kicked last week. Right. Do, you, do you think maybe more and more teams are going to be looking past the conference tournament and head to the NCAAs? Yeah, I think, I think a little bit, I think, I think people have seen that, you know, you can win that you can almost expend too much energy on those tournaments and you celebrate, you know, you're there till Saturday night, the confetti comes down. It, it kind of feels like it's a little bit of a, a fake, a fake feeling of winning a title. You know, I mean, it's not fake. You do win it. Look, don't get me wrong. All these coaches, Tommy Lloyd and, and, you know, uh, you know, of course, Dana Altman wanted to win because he had to win, but you know, Tad Boyle and those guys, they want to win. No question. Um, but I, but I, but I, I do think they look at it. it's. I think there's four parts of a season. There's the non-conference. There's, and that's that happens, and I think that's really huge for any team. Then there's the conference, which is the meat of the, and the guts of the season. And then you have this sliver of your conference tournament. That's it's it's sort of a an oddity. You know, it's just it's odd that you finish this incredibly long season, and you just play this like super quick super energetic, intense situation. But then a lot of teams like Arizona know, hey, we're going to play again next week. So and now and now you have the fourth leg of that of that season, which is, you know, let's face it. I mean, I I believe you can still have a great season and not do well in the tournament. But at the same time, it, it's uh, <laughs> the tournament is is the way that the way this the way college basketball is the tournament is more important in a lot of ways than everything else. All right, so let's talk about Arizona's draw, and I, I kind of reference this uh, dream draw on paper. Long Beach State. I mean, if if they lose that, it's you got to nuke the program. Uh, sorry, but it's true. I mean, just gonna go there. But let's talk about the second round game. You've seen Nevada in person this year. You saw him, uh, you and I were talking before the show uh, against New Mexico. Um, what do you know about them? What can you tell us about them or Dayton? Which scares you more from a matchup standpoint against Arizona? 
I think both. Those teams are super even. I expect like a, a super tight game. Nevada, Arizona, uh, Pac-12 fans or Arizona fans will remember Jared Lucas from, from Oregon State. He's a he's that sharpshooter, got them to the Elite Eight two years ago or three years ago was that? I think it was, um, maybe three years ago now. Um, he's he's a, he's a really good um, – he he can he lets it fly. He can shoot it all, all day long. Their point guard is a 6'5", basically post up player that plays point guard. Um he's he's big and he looks like a he looks like a, a college tight end. And he's a really tough matchup. And you know, obviously everybody in Arizona remembers uh Steve Alford and um he's a good coach. They they play slow. Um and the thing about the Mountain West, we saw it tonight, Colorado State just absolutely destroyed Virginia. And that league is old. They're experienced it's a it's a gritty, tough league. They're not afraid of anybody, so they're not an easy team to play. ASU beat them last year and played the best game I've ever seen them play, and they and they beat them really good. But that team's going to be hungry this year. Dayton, I don't know a ton about. I think they play kind of slow, um, and so both those teams concern me a little bit just because the way they play, just the slow play. And I think they'll be a tough team, but I think it's a game that I expect will be close. But I, you know, if I had to bet, it'd be like an Arizona, you know, 10, 12 point win as they roll, as they kind of go away from at the end. Yeah, I kind of like Nevada. Um, you know, we'll we'll preview this in our last segment. Uh, Shane and I will make our picks. I kind of like Nevada in that game. Uh, and they kind of scare me a little bit. You mentioned Lucas, what he did with Oregon State, getting the, to the Elite Eight. And, you know, the last time that Arizona has been in the Elite Eight was what, uh, almost 10 years ago, nine years ago, something like that, which is crazy to think about. Uh, after that, you you said Baylor. Uh, you mentioned earlier Baylor kind of is apprehensive to you just because Scott Drew's been there, national championship coach. I don't know. To me, I have not been impressed with what I've seen from Baylor. I, I, to, I you know, North Carolina to me, there's the Caleb Love revenge angle. I, no, and we've seen Alabama in person. I mean, Shane and I were at the game. I'm sure you were at the game. I, you know, they are they don't play any defense. I'm telling yeah. you, this if Arizona doesn't make the Final Four with this bracket. And fill in the rest of the sentence. Well, it's it might be a case of Arizona not playing well, not necessarily someone else. You know, like we saw Wisconsin and and uh, what was his name? Was it Decker that hit insane three pointers in that Elite Eight game? That you know were raining. They weren't the camera didn't even get them in the air. Like they were they were outside the camera angle. <laughs> they were going so high and. So ridiculous. I, I think I think it feels like if Arizona doesn't make it, it might be because they don't play well. Um, I think if they play well, I think they make it. Well, Eric sort of uh, sidestep Long Beach State, but I, I want to go back to it. I don't know how much you know about Long Beach State. Obviously, there's a subplot of Tommy Lloyd uh, being hired by by uh, Long Beach State's coach uh, back at, uh, at Gonzaga. But I guess the question is more, I don't think Arizona overlooked Princeton last year. I just think don't think Arizona was that good. Princeton played well, and Arizona was a bit had some injury issues as well. This year, any chance that Long Beach State could hang with, with this Arizona team, especially after having to stew over the Pac-12 tournament result for a week? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a completely different type of matchup because Long Beach State will actually match up athletically pretty well and, and like way more than any 15 seed normally does right but i think for them it's been more of a case of they've like monson always gets athletes his model was always to get these transfers that he would guarantee them like the number one schedule in the country they'd go play at carolina at duke at texas at michigan at arizona so they were always really battle tested they then they'd try to win the league title or win the conference tournament it's a little different now because everyone has transfers. So they, they've kind of lost that model. But I did notice about them kind of two things that interest me. If you look at their Ken Palm numbers, I always go to Ken Palm right away because to me it's a snapshot. It's a blueprint of what teams are, you know, and what, what their identity is. And Long Beach, their tempo was – I can't remember what it was, but it was like top 12 or something. Um, and I, I like that for Arizona's – 
like brand of basketball. Like let's get up and down, <laughs> you know, let's play, let's not, let's not play limited possessions and try and eke this thing out. So I thought that was good. They'll, they'll no doubt try to slow it down, not, not try to run exactly with Arizona, but they like to get up and go. Um, really good rebounding team, offensive rebounding team. Excellent. So it tells me they're athletic. And I just think that's a good matchup for Arizona to be athletic and go kind of head to head and, Look, I haven't seen them play. I'll be honest. I'm sure they're deep. they have they have I think Sahonis, the 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 ex uh, Washington player, um, but I can't imagine their players are just as good as Arizona players. I just don't think they are, and so I think that's a a good matchup for them. Now, hopefully, I I feel like we're gonna have at least one nail biter this weekend, but hopefully they'll save it for uh, the second round yeah, this time. The second, <laughs> that's yeah. right. Let me let me ask. I have two more questions for you. Let me ask you about uh, Kylan Boswell because he's been up and up and down as much as any Arizona player I can remember uh, in in this season. You know, he's had some great games and we love him, and then he doesn't show up in the Pac-12 tournament. I don't know if you saw this this photo of him apparently gambling out in Vegas after the semifinal, which is not good, but. What are your thoughts on Kylan Boswell going into this tournament? I feel like he's at this as cliche as it sounds, the X factor for this team. And as he goes, Arizona goes. I, I would agree with that, but I would lump in Caleb Love as well. Like, like it's, you know, sometimes I mean guard guards are like, you know, I remember I'll tell you this about players and teams and games that are so close. Like, I remember the um I said this in an interview recently. I remember the movie, um, uh, the baseball movie with Crash Davis. Um, I'm, I'm forgetting uh, with Bull, Bull Durham. Durham. Yeah, Bull Durham. And there was a great scene where they're in the bar and Crash is explaining the difference between a 250 hitter and being in the minors and a 300 hitter and, you know, being in the majors your whole life. And he's like, you know, it's a flare once a week. It's a, what does he call it? A, a, a gork or a ground ball with eyes or whatever. And it's just like the, 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 the thin line between greatness and just being average or not even, or below average. It's amazing how thin it is. And so here you got, like, look at Caleb Love's games on, and I love Caleb. Like he, I thought he was just a stud this season. He was a Pac-12 Pac player of the year. And he had two of his worst games all season against USC and Oregon, um, you know, I don't even I've, I don't even have to go back and look really look at the numbers to tell you it wasn't good. And uh, and and Kylan's you know been a little more a lot more inconsistent than that, obviously. But I, I I don't know what to say other than Kylan's young. You know, he's he's evolving as a player, and I I kind of expect to some degree some inconsistency. It's probably been more than most Arizona fans like, but all those guys are in the same boat. All it takes is a three for 27, three point game in Arizona or any team's going to get bounced probably. Um, and that's why I've liked this team because I feel like there's a toughness to them. And I feel like with Caleb anyway, if he's not making threes, I don't think he's going to go one for 10 in an NCAA game. He's going to take it to the rim. He's going to get fouled and he's going to go inside and make things happen. And hopefully Kylan does a little bit of the same because I don't care if Kylan scores even eight points. I just want him to play good defense, control the ball, you know, and, and, and distribute like his body language to me is more important than his, than his shots. Yeah. I, I think the stat is he's shooting about 20% from the field in Arizona's losses, but you're right. He can contribute in other ways as well. Uh, yeah. Last question for you. Uh, Tommy Lloyd, obviously been a fantastic regular season coach at Arizona not a lot of success in the NCAA tournament, as we talked about. I, I think that I, I agree with you. The matchup against Houston was awful in, the, in his first year. And then last year, you know, combination of things that led to the, the upset to Princeton. If Arizona falls short of the final, I wouldn't even say the final four, but say they lose in the second round this year. Would it be fair to start being more critical of Tommy Lloyd as just not a great tournament coach? Or is it just, is it just, is a tournament just too random to make that assessment? I think it's too soon. Um, definitely random, but it's just too small a sample size. Like now, granted, he's got very high seeds. Like, like, like for example, you know, Lou, he 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 lost first round games I think in four straight years um, before he won one in Arizona, and then by winning that he got to the final four. <laughs> so yeah. that's the little bit of the randomness. Now, Lou's teams at those times were ten seeds and seven seeds and that eight and nine seeds and that kind of thing, but. I, I love I love Tommy's like 
I love his mojo and his model for the tournament, which is let it rip. And the one thing that's interesting is if you have that identity and you have that, I think that's that's the way you have to win games. You cannot play scared. You can't play tentative. You can't play hesitant. But the weird thing is, as much as Tommy Lloyd says that, and I thought his teams let it rip the first year, they didn't let it rip last year. And I know he was telling them that, but his team didn't listen to him. And part of that was I didn't think they had guards that were ready. They were, they were, there was an injury, obviously, to, to Kurt Creesa. Um, I think Bala was Bala was hurt. And yeah. then broke his hand. I had a broken hand in the game. Yeah, I think he was hurt for a good chunk so, of the second half of the season. He played through it, but yeah, he wasn't the same guy. Yeah. So I think it's too early, too random so far, too small a sample size. I think he'll be okay. Um, but you know, they got a, the proofs in the pudding, right? All right, Matt. So two questions for you. First of all, uh we, Shane and I are gonna make our picks in the next segment. Who do you have in the final four? And how far do you have Arizona going? Well, um, I haven't gone to the final four. Okay. I, I will admit it's, I'm, I'm so early in my bracket study. I'll get these teams wrong, but I think Houston's a final four team. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they're in the, I don't think they're in the same bracket. I think Purdue's a final four team. I think Purdue's, I think they're going to come back because of what happened last year. Remember Virginia lost to a 16 and the year later they won the national title. I can't bet Matt Painter in the tournament. I just can't do it. I, I hear you, but they've but they've they've got an edge because of what's happened. Um, and I think I love Connecticut. I mean, it's hard to bet against Connecticut. I mean, but everyone's loving Connecticut, which tells me it's not gonna happen. <laughs> so the moment you start to the moment you figure out the the tournament, the moment like things don't get figured out. So um I've got Arizona with those three, I guess, is if the, if if that matches up. And so who would be your national champion? I'm guessing Houston. No, Arizona, man. Oh, okay. Hey, there you go. Listen, I mean, I didn't know if hey, you were going to. All right. So hey, this... here's my take. If okay. Arizona gets that far, not that they ha- have a monkey on their back necessarily at this moment, but because these are new to teams and new players, but as a program, the, the programs do. And the programs had a lot of tough losses. The programs had, you know, some teams that could have won it. I mentioned 14 and 15 against Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Um, they got a tough seed two years ago. I, I think they're due and I'm, I feel confident. Love hearing that from you. Now I want to talk about the Homer angle because it's funny. Somebody asked me and they said, you know, when Matt calls a game, uh, on Pac-12 network or Fox sports one, you call it very neutral. And I think that's great. But I think some Arizona fans wonder, well, why can't he be like Richard Jefferson <laughs> when Richard Jefferson called the game? And that's where you could see Shane's reaction. And celebrate with the team in the locker room afterwards. And yeah. So that was kind of, uh, I'm just kind of curious, your philosophy on broadcasting an Arizona game and how to stay neutral when doing so. Well, I mean, number one, um, I ain't no Richard Jefferson. I'm not as rich. I'm not as good looking. I don't have the swag that RJ has. I haven't won a world championship or played 15 years in the NBA. I mean, I'm saying all these things in fun and whatever, but RJ's the guy. And what RJ did in that game was actually brilliant. Like, I loved it. Because what he did was, he the first thing he said was, this is going to be an Arizona broadcast, and, it, and if you don't like it, then turn it off. And it was true, but it was also in jest. Like, he he was goofing on everybody, right? And that's what Richard does, and he's – he, I've never heard a, a, a broadcaster take the side of a team ever in a in a game like that. Um, and you just like like most people don't. You're not going to last in the business if you do. But Richard's Richard. Like I'm, <laughs> he's he's a different he's a different cat. No pun intended. And uh, that's why we all love him, right? He's like I was saying this. Steve Kerr is always going to be the ambassador of U of A. Always. He's he's the OG. He's the guy, but Richard's kind of the new era guy. I mean, he's the new ambassador, the fun, you know, Twitter, Instagram, you know, he's he's the young, young, young kids. And it reminds me of the Brewski Gronk sort of comparison. You got Brewski, the OG, that's kind of this, you know, straight shooter. And then Gronk is Gronk's Gronk. Nobody can, you know, do what Gronk does, probably except Richard. So no, but I for me, it's always look. Brian Jeffries 
was the guy that mentored me when I first did radio before I did TV. And the first thing he ever told me is one of the first things he ever said. He said, we are doing an Arizona radio broadcast. It's okay to root to, to somewhat root for the team. Now you still want to be objective and do your job. But what I remember him telling me is it's a professional thing not to say we are us. And he said, he actually said, and I told Ted Robinson, I actually told Ted Robinson uh, two weeks ago, we just did a game together and I was telling him the story. He goes, I love that. That's an incredible, you know, advice from Brian. And he, Brian actually said, you can say we are us because he goes, you actually played on the team. He goes, I didn't, I can't say that. But he said, if you want to be a true professional, don't say we are us, you know, like you, people will take you more seriously and, and like you, you'll have a, you'll have a more longevity in the business. And uh, I've always just kind of treated it like that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm definitely an Arizona fan. And, but when the game starts, like I just, I'm into the game as an announcer. I don't, I don't ever worry about, you know, being biased and, and, and I, you know, being part of the PAC 12, I call a lot of ASU games, you know, I call a lot of, you see, you know, other teams. And so I owe it to the other teams to be professional and not, and not take a side and, and, and call, you know, and tell their stories just as, as sort of passionately and, and, and as well as I tell the Arizona stories, hopefully. Well, we always enjoy listening to you, whether on the air or with us, we've done, this is our 200th show. Shane and I have referenced multiple times and we couldn't have picked a better guest to come on with us for, for show number 200. Thank you for giving us the optimism going into our pick segment coming up, but uh, great to catch up with you, Matt. And I'm sure that we're going to talk to you in the next couple of weeks, one way or the other here. No, I appreciate you guys. I love your show. It's, it's always fun being on. You guys ask some good questions and really great questions. You know, the team, like I always say this, and you guys are part of this. Arizona fans are tough for me because you guys know the team so well. Like I gotta, I'm always trying to come up with new things. It's hard. You guys know the team so well. And you guys know the, you know, the, the players and just their their weaknesses and strengths. It's it's not easy to come up with with new stuff. So I appreciate, you know, you guys in the coverage. Discover more play for all at Harrah's Ok Chin Casino. Hi, folks. Here are your drinks. Where having fun means racking up reward credits with the Caesars Rewards Loyalty Program. They can be redeemed for food, free play, hotel stays, and more. Not only here in the city of Maricopa, but also at more than 50 Caesars properties coast to coast. From Harris, Las Vegas, to Caesars Palace in Atlantic City. What are you waiting for? Play for all at Harris Ok Chin Casino, the official sponsor of play. Thanks to Matt Muehlbach for joining us once again. It's great to hear his thoughts, and we'll see what happens here in the next few weeks. Get your blood pressure medications ready. We're all going to need them. All right, Shane, before we get into our picks, which I know a lot of people are anxious for, once again, this is the 200th episode of Wildcat Country, and we are giving away three awesome prizes. Tell us what those are and how people can win them. All right. Subscribe to our YouTube. This is the clip notes version. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave a comment on uh, below this video on your favorite uh, Arizona NCAA tournament memory. You'll be automatically to enter to win uh, one of three prizes, a $200 uh, stay at a Harris Auction Casino, plus a $200 gift certificate for dinner and a $30 certificate uh, to Agave's for breakfast. Uh, you'll also be entered to win to, to win one of two ice shaker bottles, Arizona, awesome Arizona logo ice shaker bottles uh, from our sponsor, Chris Konkowski, who, who founded Ice Shaker. Uh, you'll be automatically entered. We're going to do the drawing. Uh, I'm going to do the drawing next week. We're going to announce the winners on our 201st episode. But the big thing is make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel to have a chance to win. All right. So everybody's going to say 97 uh, for their favorite tournament memories. Mine, I got two of them. Uh, 2005 Sweet 16, Salim Stoudemire beats Oklahoma State mm -hmm. with a last second shot. And then, of course, Arizona Duke 2011, Derek Will the Derek Williams game. Wildcats were losing at halftime and just obliterated Kyrie Irving and the Duke Blue Devils in the second half. That was one of the most fun Arizona games I have ever watched and will never forget it. So those are my two. What are your what are yours, Shane? Uh I I'd probably go with those as well. Those would be my top two. I was going to mention Arizona Duke. I mean, that was so much fun watching it with a couple of buddies of mine and not thinking Arizona had a chance. And I remember with about five minutes left, I look at the score, Arizona was up double digits. And I thought, 
holy crap, Arizona's going to win this game. I didn't really believe it until that late in the game. Arizona was a five seed, and they, they, they didn't make the tournament the year before that in Sean Miller's first year, and of course uh, came very close to making the Final Four, but uh, that was a heck of a win, and it was a heck of a lot of fun. All right, now we're going to make some picks. We'll get to Arizona in a bit, but we're going to go, I want your, your regional finals and who's going to beat who. Uh, let's start in the East region, Shane. Who do you like? I have, have got uh, Auburn over BYU. Uh, Wait, Auburn, wh- what? Auburn is the only team in the country that's in the top 10 in adjusted offense and defense in Ken Palm. BYU has been one of the most underrated teams in the country this year, but I am going to go with Auburn in that region. Oh, my goodness, Shane. I mean, yeah. the Auburn pick, all right, I can get behind a BYU. Come on. That one, that's, that'd that's that be interesting. But all right, I appreciate going out on a limb. I think UConn is by far the best team, and I'm actually going to pick them over Illinois. Uh, I think I was really impressed with what I saw from Illinois. They don't play a lot of defense. Iowa State uh, up there, that Iowa State-Illinois game, great defense great against great offense if they were to meet as a 2-3 matchup. But I think UConn is, is basically unbeatable at this point. Uh, so I'm going with, uh, with UConn to win the East region. All right, South region. Uh, you also have another interesting pick. Let's hear it. <laughs> That's not a way of saying uh, a bad one. Uh, no, well, I I just don't know if Houston's built for March, um, I, or at least, to, I mean, maybe to get to the Final Four, but not win a national championship. I'm going to take Marquette over Duke in the Elite Eight in the South region. You know, Marquette is a very Jekyll and Hyde team. When they're at their best, they can beat anyone's, and they've showed that. And I, I sus- for whatever reason, suspect we're going to see the best Marquette in the NCAA tournament. That's a great pick. Uh, if Tyler Kolek is healthy, that's a good pick. And I actually like the Duke, or sorry, I like the, uh, yeah, I like the Duke pick there. Going Houston over Kentucky. Uh, I think Kentucky, without offense, they they have come together. Uh, didn't didn't uh, fare so well in the SEC tournament, but those guys can flat out score. It would be great defense with Houston, great offense, Kentucky. I think the great defense wins. I think Houston finally overcomes it, gets the final four. Midwest region. Now, you and I are both fading Purdue. I'm going to go Creighton, the three seed, over Kansas, the four seed. Now, that may be a crazy pick, but Kansas gets healthy with Kevin McCullough Jr. and Hunter Dickinson. I think they can beat just about anybody, and I do not and will not trust Purdue ever in the NCAA tournament under Matt Painter. I knew we were going to agree on not having Purdue in the final final four. Give me Tennessee over Purdue in the Elite Eight. You know, Tennessee is one of the few teams in the country that can Mm -hmm. give Purdue trouble defensively. They're number three in Ken Palm and adjusted defense. They're going to be salty after losing early in the SEC tournament. So give me the Vols. West region. All right. Arizona, Long Beach State, Thursday, 11 a.m. Arizona time. I like the Wildcats by 15 to 20. So do you. Yep. Yep. Long Beach State does have some you know, some decent guards. They have a double-double machine a guy from the Ivory Coast who could give Arizona some trouble inside. They're not a great outside shooting team. They shoot below 31% from three, which of course means they're probably going to shoot twice that well against Arizona. But I think they're going to just struggle to keep up offensively once Arizona gets going. I think this could be a close game for 20 minutes or so, and then Arizona goes on one of its 15-0 runs and puts the game away. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not playing the line on this one. I, I think the line's, what, around 20, 19 I saw or 20. I 20 and a half last year. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's that's one I probably wouldn't. Just like a couple years ago, Tommy Lloyd is not a great is not great against the spread in the NCAA tournament. I don't even know if he's covered as a head coach uh, mm-hmm. offhand. Maybe somebody leave that in the YouTube comments, but I don't think so. Uh, so who do they play, Dayton or Nevada? Uh, I, I would... I, think nevada yeah and i yep. think arizona okay. would my prediction would be arizona would beat nevada in a, a a game that's way too close for comfort you know nevada is one of the most balanced teams in the tournament they're just inside the ken palm top 40 in both offense and defense they've beaten some ranked teams in the conference that's arguably better from top to bottom than the pac-12 is they've won 10 of their last 12 going into the ncaa tournament that'd be a difficult game maybe one that kind of resembles arizona tcu from a couple of years ago yep. in terms of yep. a g- game that could just take some years off our lives but i would pick arizona to win in a close game if it's if it's Dayton, I don't think the Flyers' defense will be able to contain Arizona for 40 minutes. So I think Arizona would win that one a bit more comfortably, somewhere in the 10 to 15 point range. But my official pick is going to be Arizona over Nevada by I you know, three points. Close wow. Point. Okay. Yeah. Saying Arizona by six over Nevada. Um, they I think they pull away late, uh, but I think it's close. I think that one. I I would like Dayton to win that game once again. If if you know Dayton is better than we think, so be it. Uh, I I mean they're a talented team. Nevada just scares me a little bit. Um, it's the type of team that they get hot shooting. Arizona might be in trouble. So yeah. uh, I think they win by six. I think they make free throws at the end of the game, get some late stops. But I agree with you. I think it is a blood pressure check game on Saturday. All right, Shane, how far does Arizona get this postseason? Uh, well, I'd like to note, as I noted earlier on Twitter, that I did pick Arizona to go further than they actually did the previous two years, which I guess I know most people did, but still. Um, hopefully that won't be the case this year. I've got them going to the Elite Eight and then falling to a team that we saw in person, Eric, uh, Alabama, 
We saw that game in Phoenix. And I just remember ingrained in my, in my head, Eric is all those open threes that Alabama missed against Arizona and Bama's a good team. They, 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 they the SEC is just about, it, it's a solid basketball conference. We don't talk about it a lot because of football. I, I have Alabama beating edging out Arizona in a rematch in the elite eight, which I certainly hope doesn't happen, but that is my official pick. So you would have like the Iron Bowl meet up in the final four. Mm. You'd have Alabama and Auburn, which is a, a very interesting. I, I went in and made my picks and I'm like, oh, I didn't even mean to, I didn't mean to do that. I'm not trying to be provocative. It's just this is just what I came up with. So, yeah, I we got an Iron Bowl basketball matchup in the uh, in the final four. Again, hope that doesn't happen, but that would be quite a story. All right. How, what, how far do I have Arizona going? I, I tried. I tried to find losses. The Caleb Love revenge game. I think Arizona would take it. I'm going Arizona to the final four in Glendale over North Carolina. Let's hope Shane and I are not jinxes and they don't and they lose early. I just feel confident that this team is primed. They are ready. Uh, they would play Salt Lake City, Los Angeles, Glendale. Do not have to leave the western half of the United States. That is a tremendous advantage that they have. And I think they beat North Carolina in a classic to make it to the final four. And we are all scrambling to figure out how to get tickets to that uh, in a few weeks. I certainly hope that it comes to fruition. All right, your national championship. Uh, who do you have, Shane? Very interesting, I, considering you have three SEC teams. Three and SEC, yeah. It was Again, not intentional. It's just how it all came together. Mm -hmm. I got Tennessee yeah. over Auburn in the championship wow. game. Now, Auburn and Tennessee had by far uh, the two best point differentials in the SEC this season. They are two of the most well-rounded uh, teams in college basketball. Remember, Tennessee was likely looking at a one seed a few days ago. I know they slipped up early in the SEC tournament. I don't think that's going to matter. Tennessee beat Auburn in their only matchup of the season a few weeks ago. So if that matchup were to come to fruition, which is a long shot, but I will, would take the Vols to edge out Auburn in a low-scoring championship game. Low score, Interesting. Okay, because yeah. Auburn's a real high-scoring team. I, I just, you know, I, I appreciate you're going crazy here, but I'm going to take one seed <laughs> over one seed. I'm going UConn over Houston. I think UConn is the best team. I think they will be the first team to repeat since 2006, 2007, Florida. They are just so well coached. Danny Hurley, a much better coach than his brother. Mm. And Houston, Kelvin Sampson, maybe this is his swan song, but I think he finally gets to the Final Four. Listen, if Arizona were to make it to the Final Four and lose to UConn, I, I don't think anybody, you can't reasonably complain. They got, no. they they reached their ceiling. And I, and I would be okay with that. Uh, yeah. Some of you might not and think that we're crazy, and so be it. Uh, but to me, I if, just get there, just get there so we can figure out, uh, how to do, uh, you know, how to get our tickets. If they were to make it further, uh, past this weekend, I'm sure Shane and I will do some, uh, extra shows. We'll talk about that, uh, on next week's, uh, podcast. One game now, at a time. One game at a time. Let us all just kind of sweat it out this weekend. Here's hoping for the best. I mean, for the women's team, best of luck to them. Hope they win at least one game, if not more. And and pull some upsets. And let's just hope the men's team takes care of business and make it to episode 201 of Wildcat Country, because yes, otherwise it's a long time until football season. So, uh, Shane, it's an absolute pleasure to always do to have done 200 of these shows with you. Likewise. Uh, we have a blast talking to different guests. I mean, Steve Spurrier, Bill Walton, uh, you know, jump out. But even guests, Casey Jacobson, uh, Matt Muehlbach, um, you know, all the all the guys, uh, Reggie Geary, who we had on last week. That was a great interview. Miles Simon. Who, right over the years. Brent yeah. Brennan Brent the Brennan. other week. Uh, we've had a really nice Rolodex. Uh, it is always uh, a blast. And uh, good luck to those of you. for uh, If you're going for the prizes, please leave a comment on the YouTube page. So thanks to Matt Muehlbach once again. Thanks to my partner, Shane Dale. It's always an honor to do this program with you. For Shane Dale, I'm Eric Cohen. Thanks for listening. And especially this week, bear down. Bear down.